Shalom everyone. Thank God that God grants us this wonderful opportunity to worship God online. Welcome everyone from all over the world. Today, we want to think about God's word from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Title is Focus on Jesus Gospel. Be united in mind and thought. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for your grace. Thank you for granting us this chance to worship you, praise you, and listen to your words. Please, our Father, shine upon us with your light of grace. Take up heavy things from our heart. Help us to dust off many burdensome things. O oh God, fill our lives with your infinite love, power, wisdom, and rule. Be with us through the Holy Spirit. Remind us of the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Empower your people, fill their heart with great joy and hope. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Before I forget, I would like to ask you uh, to, uh, you know, the subscribe and uh, like uh, this, uh, this YouTube, this is also goes to YouTube. And when we have 1,000 subscribers, the YouTube company gives us chatting room. So people who come to this worship service or lectures or many things can ask questions, I can answer, or we can exchange. So, so there is a wonderful opportunity, I ask you. If possible to please you know the push button for subscribe or well, you know I like it that way we remember that uh, Antonio Gaudi a great unknown architecture in Barcelona Spain he designed the many great buildings uh, but he couldn't build them at once, no. Many sightseers came and they helped. So, through their help, these magnificent Antonio Gaudi buildings were established. Some, some uh, I think one great cathedral is still be, being built. He, I mean, for over 100 years. And seven of his great architectures have been uh, called as World Heritage Site. I believe our worship service and biblically integrated lectures and many YouTube lectures will be very great and bring a lot of benefit to people. So I ask you, if possible, please subscribe. It doesn't cost, but it helps God's ministry a great deal. Last week, we uh, thought about how Corinthian church was built. Apostle Paul, a tent-making missionary, went to Corinth. And he began to work with his own hands and he began to share gospel with the people. He began to preach to people who were who had spiritual desires. And God gathered people who had a desire for the gospel, who were willing to work with their own hands. 
and uh, spend their money, time, and heart for God. They were persecuted, but many of them withstood persecution, and they became leaders and church was established. Today's word is about Apostle Paul's letter to Corinthian Christians. After he spent one and a half years in Corinth in sharing the gospel, he left Corinth, went to other areas. Later, he spent three years in Ephesus and he wrote this letter to Corinthian Christians. So, I'll just read each verse and have a brief comment and we'll think about it. First part is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 through 9. Focus on Jesus' gospel. See Christians and church with hope. That's my title, first part. First one says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. Paul confessed that he was called by God to an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Apostle means those who are sent. In contemporary terms, is missionary. He confessed that he was called to be a missionary for the gospel of Jesus Christ by the will of God. This calling of God is very important thing. One can do God's work only when God calls him. One cannot do God's work with one's desire alone, aspiration alone, good thinking alone. No. There comes a time when every servant of God feels, I'm not cut out to be a servant of God. Yes, many people joyfully begin to serve God, but the time comes when they feel, I'm not cut out to be a servant of God. I cannot serve God with my best thinking, wisdom, patience, know-how, experience or anything. You see, a servant of God can serve God because God calls him or her. So one cannot even resign from God's work. That's right. God calls one to serve God. And when God calls one to serve God, of course, God promises to equip him or her with all things necessary. God promises to provide her or him with everything she or he needs. God calls one to serve God. Serving God is more than a voluntary job. It's God's calling. Paul says, he also introduces Brother Sosthenes. Probably he also wrote Apostle Paul's letter. I mean, Apostle Paul spoke, dictated, and he wrote. But also, Brother Sosthenes was the one who received great persecution when Paul began to preach the gospel in Corinth. 
Athens was synagogue ruler, but he accepted Christ, and he was badly beaten, persecuted. But he held on to the gospel. And Paul says, Paul and Sustains. When you hold on to the gospel, God honors you. A leader is a person who holds on to God's calling to the end. That's a leader. Yes, when one holds on to the gospel in his area, he is a leader in that area and God honors him. Let us move to verse 2. Paul says, To the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be his holy people. Some people may feel strange. Wow, I heard that Corinthian people are very, very immoral people. A lot of drunkards were there, a lot of this sexually moral people are there, a lot of this uh, corrupt people are there. So how can Paul call Corinthian Christians as those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people? This is because Paul sees these young Christians with the power of Jesus' gospel in his mind. We remember when Jesus saw Simon Peter. Simon Peter was a very emotional man. Easily upset, easily disturbed. He was like a sand or reed in a lake shore. But when Jesus saw him, Jesus said, Your name is Simon. You will be called Cephas or Rock or Peter. You will be called an immovable rock, cornerstone for God's mighty ministry. Jesus called Peter that way. Peter means rock in Greek word. Peter called Simon Peter rock. Because Jesus has power to make him one. We remember what Jesus said to Peter. Come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men means a leader who brings people from dying sea to God's kingdom. I will make you a leader. That's Jesus' promise and determination. Paul saw this hope and determination of Jesus in the lives of Christians in Corinth. They are sanctified by the power of Jesus' blood. This is a really, really important thing. Focus on Jesus' gospel. See people with Jesus' hope. See church with Jesus' hope. I often heard people say, I'm very good people, yes, very, very. 
those who love God but do not go to church. They say, I see many hypocrites in the church. I see many, many weaklings in the church, so I don't go. I appeal to them. We remember what God said in Leviticus chapter 3. Worship God in an assembly. It's good that for us to worship God individually, personally, a personal relationship with God, with God is needed. But we are individuals as well as community. It's very important to worship God in a, commun in a community. That's why God says, worship God in an assembly community. Without community, there is no individual. There is no community without individuals. We need both. And we need to see church with hope. Focus on Jesus gospel. Focus on Jesus power to sanctify church. By the way, church is a group of people who confess Jesus as Christ and who have fellowship with Jesus Christ. Yes. And Jesus sanctifies them. Paul says, you are called to be his holy people. This is very important. We are called to be God's holy people. God says, God is holy, so you should be holy too. Yes, holiness is our direction. Of course, we become holy by the power of the Holy Spirit when we remain united to Christ. Holy Spirit sanctifies us. Word of God sanctifies us. We are not sanctified by with our own willpower, even though we think we can do, but we soon run out of power. We are not better than this kind of a small battery cell who, which goes out of energy soon. We need to be supplied with power through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, through God's grace. Nonetheless, we are called to be holy. So it's very important for us to pray to be holy to work with God and live a life of holy by God's power. Paul greet Corinthian Christians, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is God's favor which we do not have any merit for. Undeserving gift of God, free gift of God is God's grace. God gave us grace even before we are, we are created. God predestined to send Jesus to the world to save us. We were nothing but dust of the earth and uh, even if we got created the earth, we are not even dust of the earth. We are nothing. But in His grace, God created us with the image of God, word of God, blessing of God, position of God. All wonderful things appoint us to be rulers of the whole universe, 
And when we died in our sins, God sent Jesus on the cross. He died for us. God sanctified us. God recreated us in Jesus Christ. Gave us new birth, new creation. So we are by God's grace through and through. By the grace of God, I am what I am from A to Z. This is a very important thing to remember. And also, grace gives us power to do God's work. Apostle Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. This grace comes first. When you feel, when you feel with God's grace, all other wonderful qualities, spiritual things come to you. That's why Paul says, grace and peace to you, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are filled with God's grace, peace, shalom comes to you. This peace is not just peace of mind, but peace of body, peace of relations, peace of economy, finance, peace of health, peace of emotion, Peace of everything. When you are filled with God's grace, you are healed. Brothers, sisters, let me tell you actually, when we are saved by God's grace, through faith, we are fundamentally healed healed even from death, sin and death, and all consequences of death, separation with God. That means when we are united with Christ Jesus in his cross and the resurrection, when we work with God through the Holy Spirit, you are healed. I am healed fundamentally. Of course, we can be injured in this land, but we have scars, but all those scars wounds will fall, fall off from us when we enter the kingdom of God and this beautiful leaves of the tree of life in God's kingdom gently strokes you, touches you, all your wounds of heart, scars will be gone. And we shall be like risen Christ, beautiful, powerful, imperishable, glorious, and we'll sing praise to God. So brothers, sisters, please, Follow me. Gracious God, I am fundamentally healed through Jesus' death and the resurrection. I am on the way to heaven, being led by the Holy Spirit. Do not regard me or help me. Help me not to treat myself as a sick person, but help me to regard myself and treat myself as a healthy person. And let me praise God. And as long as I live on this earth, let me praise your name. Let me serve you. Let me serve the cause of Jesus. Let me love my neighbors. Let me take care of nature. 
God, thank you. This is your holy healing. Amen. God bless you. Now let's move to verse 4. Paul's thanksgiving. Paul says, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Isn't it amazing? Corinthian Christians were full of problems, as we will see in 1 Corinthians throughout the letter and 2 Corinthians. There are divisions, they are fighting with each other. Some people, when they came to this fellowship, they have had no regard for this. They began to eat their own food while some poor fellow Christians were starving without food. Can you believe that? There are sexual immorality, even incest, even really bad kind, terrible. I mean, all sexual immorality is terrible, but even the worst kind. There are a lot of argument, a lot of nasty things. But how could Paul thank God for Corinthian Christians? He could thank God because the power of Jesus Christ. That's very important thing. Not because of people's present conditions or qualities, but because of the power of God's grace given to them in Christ Jesus. That's what it says in verse 4. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Because you are there, God gave you his grace through Jesus Christ. And I'm just thankful to God that you are there. <laughs> That's really amazing, yeah. Nowadays, many gracious wives say to the husband, I'm just grateful to you because you are there. <laughs> many graceful husbands say to their wives, I'm just grateful to God. I'm grateful to you. Because you have not died, but you are there. Many parents say to their children, I'm just grateful to you that you are alive. That should be our attitude. God's power, grace, power of grace can change anyone in Christ Jesus. We remember what the Apostle Paul said, By the grace of God, I am what I am. I was an enemy of God. I was persecuting church of God. I was a murderer. I was a terrible sinner. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I have been changed. And I serve the Lord hard. Let us Thank God for our family members, our church family members, our neighbors, our children. All because of God's grace given to them in Christ Jesus. We can be just grateful to God and grateful to people simply because they have accepted Christ Jesus. Paul says, For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech, with all knowledge. Paul sees Corinthian Christians with their future in mind. That's very important. Focus on Jesus' gospel. See people with hope and power of God.
Paul saw God was confirming their testimony about God among Corinthian Christians. Even though they are poor now, but in time distance, they are rich in God, past, present, future, all one. In God, poor Corinthian Christians are rich. In God, ignorant, ignorant Corinthian Christians are rich in spiritual knowledge. Verse 9, Paul says, God is faithful, who has called you in the fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful. He keeps his promise. He is good to the end. His, his love endures forever. God has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is really something important to remember. God didn't call people to be Christians and become like a sticks. No, God called them into fellowship with Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit works for that fellowship and there's this person this christian has fellowship with jesus christ all the wonderful change occurs let us not see people like some sticks but let us look at people christians as those who have a friendship with Jesus, fellowship with Jesus. And let us pray for that, encourage that. Our Church for Life Christian Fellowship is praying for the first All-American Christ-like Leadership Conference and Travel in a national park this year. We hope to hold this first Christ-like leadership conference in Indiana Dunes National Park. And hopefully next year we'll have one in the Yosemite National Park. And we'll go through all these 62 national parks. Some people may say, I passed to take a Will you leave six to two more here? <laughs> My point is that God is increasing our church. God is raising many house churches through our online services all over the world. And many house churches or churches, they'll become churches. They will go to national park, USA National Park, like what's the Crater Lake National Park in Oregon, or Grand Canyon National Park, Grand Teton, or this Smoky Mountains, Yellowstone, Zion Canyon, you name it, wonderful, Arcadia, Isle Royale, all those great things in their regions. So in one year, Pacific Northeast region can go to Olympic Park and have this All-American Christ-like leadership conference. In Florida, people can, can go to Everglade. Some people in Virginia can go to Shenandoah Valley. We will do all these things. We will begin to do this because we believe in the power of God's grace in Jesus Christ. God has been raising a great Christ-like leaders in various fields in integrated music of God, nature, humanity, in theology of integration, or in the integrated Bible research of Hebrew and Greek scriptures. 
formed in many, many fields in Jesus culture or in this caring for this isolated people. All this, God is raising many great leaders, Christ-like leaders in various fields. And I believe God has the power to raise all American Christ-like leaders all over the world. Now let's move to second point, focus on Jesus gospel, be united in mind and thought. There are also a uh, first major problem mentioned in, chap in chapter 10 verse 1, uh, chapter 1 verse 10. Paul says, I appeal to you brothers and sisters in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. In Corinth, there were divisions. Some people say, I follow Paul. He first came here and started our church. Others say, I follow Apollos. Apollos is a great speaker. Paul is a great writer, but in his presence, his speaking is not that great. Apollo is great. I follow Apollo. Another said, hey, Apostle Peter is the first apostle who saw risen Christ. I follow him. Paul says he is an apostle, but he was not with Jesus during Jesus' earthly ministry. <laughs> Others are tired with this kind of a fighting and said, I belong to Christ. It's very familiar problem, division. Instead of focusing on Jesus' gospel, some Christians in Corinth focused on their leaders. It's very easy to be like that. Then we get lost. Focus on the gospel of Jesus. Don't focus on people. Don't focus on leaders. These days, many people say, Oh, I loved the church, but that minister fell. I'm very disappointed. I'm not going to go to church. I can understand. But don't focus on leader. Focus on Jesus' gospel. Leader is like a leader of climbers. He goes ahead. When a leader falls down on the plain field, no problem, not much, usually on the grass. But this leader goes climb high mountains, others follow. If he makes small mistakes, he falls from high mountain to the ravine. So shall we stop climbing the mountain because of that? No, there's always the risk. But when we focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can pray for their leader and we can pray for the church, we can move on. Of course, their leader needs rehabilitation, training and rehabilitation. I remember a great church in Colorado, the great church. Their leader fell, but all the Christians were not shaken. They said, it's very sad. We'll pray for him. But we focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a community, we support each other and we move on. And God established new leader. They moved on. And old leader, I believe he was the rehabilitating but important thing is focus on Jesus gospel that's what Paul says is Christ divided among you did I die for you no only Christ Jesus Paul says I'm glad that I didn't baptize you only, only except few of them No, don't 
focus on right, this uh, right either focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Rituals are helpful in means of grace. They are important. But Paul says it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves you. Baptism is important, it's helpful, but if you focus on baptism or those who gave you baptism, then, you know, focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many Corinthian Christians say, oh, I was baptized by Paul, so I follow him. Oh, I was baptized by Peter, I follow him. No, 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 no. Gospel. Actually, Bible says, baptize people in his ends in Hebrew, Greek, into the name of the Father, into the name of Jesus Christ the Son, into the name of the Holy Spirit. The real spiritual meaning of baptism is spiritual transfer of ownership. Yes. Gospel is the key. When we focus on leaders, rituals, rules, political situations, politics, all those things, we are divided. But if we focus on Jesus, gospel, we can be united in mind and thought. May we be united in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the people of all of the world to the ends of the universe. God bless you. God bless your church to be united in mind and thought perfectly when you focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless your people to focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. They may be united with Jesus. They may be united in, together among themselves in mind and thought. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.